three months ago, I gave you the key. I told you that once this one thing happens, you'll know that Hamas is finished. And the crazy part, now it happened exactly the way I said it three months later. Now, the way to understand when Hamas is finished is not by reading mainstream media newspapers, not by watching TV, is by looking at the key. The key here is Egypt, nothing else. Not the words, not the PR statement, nothing. Egypt's behavior, Egypt's actions will tell you everything you need to know about the relevance of Hamas or lack thereof. Now look, Egypt just a few weeks ago told the Israelis, guys, if you're going to operate on the border with Egypt and Gaza, we will not have that. We won't accept it and we will act against it. In fact, if you do that, we will cease any peace agreements we have with you. We will freeze them. They will not be in effect because we see this as a quasi declaration of war. We don't want Israeli military on our border and we definitely don't want the refugees, millions of them going into our land. No, don't you dare. Don't you do it. If you take action there, our peace agreement that we had for decades is freezed. It's ceased. It's no longer in action until further notice. It's a huge statement and a huge sign that Israel and Egypt were not getting along and that Egypt was not playing ball with the Israelis whatsoever. And in my video, which I posted on November of 2023, I told you the reason. The Egyptians can't stand Hamas. They would like nothing more than the Israelis to wipe Hamas out of Gaza. Hamas, on the other hand, is a huge pain in the neck for the Egyptians, even though it's a small, tiny organization. And Egypt is a massive country. Hamas, because of its ties to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, has a lot of power and a lot of potential to cause massive amounts of chaos and destabilization inside Egypt by working with the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the one thing the Assisi government fears the most. Because that is literally one of the only things that can topple the current Egyptian regime. And after years of animosity between the Egyptians and Hamas, after years of chaos inside Egypt caused by Hamas, the Egyptians and Hamas got a deal done. A few years ago, Sinwar and Assisi sat down and they made a deal. You don't meddle in our business, we won't meddle in your business. You look away when we smuggle things through the Egyptian Gaza border. Don't get involved, don't take the Israeli side, let us do our thing. On the other hand, we won't do anything to destabilize your regime in Egypt. You'll be fine. We won't do anything. They signed a deal. They shook on it. And to this day, this deal was the reason Egypt was not playing ball with nothing right now in Gaza. In fact, Egypt wouldn't even join the naval coalition that the United States established to protect the Suez Canal, which is the way the Egyptian economy makes a lot of its money. The Egyptians were just too terrified of the potential of Hamas causing havoc and chaos in their own country. And I told you in November of 2023, once Egypt plays ball with the Israelis, once Egypt plays ball with the U.S. and goes against the Hamas, at that point, you'll know that Hamas is finished. And now that is exactly what happened. Because today, we got an official statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Egypt saying that Egypt is not going to cancel, delay, postpone, or freeze the peace agreement with the Israelis, no matter what happens on the southern border between Gaza and Egypt, which is a complete 180 of the position they had just a few weeks ago, basically giving the Israelis a complete green light, carte blanche to do whatever they want in the south of Gaza. Now, obviously, it serves Egyptian interests as well, if not more than the Israelis. They would love to see Hamas gone and that border closed, but... To this point, they could not let the Israelis do it without protesting because they were afraid of Hamas. Now that Hamas is gone, they no longer have to play this game. And the fact that they went open about it, they went to the media saying, hey, you guys can do whatever you want. That means they no longer fear Hamas. And if there's anybody in the Middle East that knows the true state of Hamas, it's probably only the Egyptians and the Qataris. Nobody else really knows. And the fact that they just went ahead and took a position against Hamas on a direct collision course, Tells you everything you need to know. Now, if you needed more indications, no problem. Look what happened just two days ago. The Israelis cleared two hostages out of the heart of Gaza, out of the heart of Rafa, which is not even conquered yet. They went in, they took out two hostages. That kind of intel is not just quality intel. There's more of it. There's no chance in hell that they only had info on two prisoners and that's it. They probably have a lot more info, a lot more intel. Now, that tells you that they have a lot of leaks on the Hamas side. 
People are snitching. People are talking because there's no other way for this information to get out. Somebody is snitching, somebody is talking, and somebody is surrendering and giving up intel. The only reason for anybody in Gaza that's affiliated with Hamas or has any information to do that is if Hamas is gone. It's irrelevant because the fear of anybody who gets even suspected of cooperating with the Israelis by Hamas is not just death. It's horrendous, unspeakable things to them and their entire family. So for somebody to snitch like that and give quality intel to the Israelis, that means that Hamas no longer scares the people of Gaza. Now, if you needed more indications, just yesterday, the Palestinian Authority started going at the Hamas people in the West Bank, in Jenin. That hasn't been done in years because the Palestinian Authority literally fears Hamas. It's a major, major force on the West Bank. And that's why so far the Palestinian Authority never did anything against Hamas. They were just too scared. It's a huge headache. Why? But now that Hamas is falling apart, command chain is falling apart, logistics, everything is gone. Nobody knows what Sinwar is. Nobody heard from him in weeks. They have the leeway. They don't have the fear to act against Hamas out in the public. Now, the question is, how soon will Hamas finally collapse officially? That's a tough question. So far, we know the Israelis killed 20 out of the 30,000 Hamas terrorists, and we know they ruined about 20% out of the entire tunnel system of Hamas. So there's way more work to be done. 18 out of 24 Hamas battalions are destroyed. So there's still fighting power there. And there might be a while for the Israelis to clear it out because these guys are not about to surrender. I've explained it in my previous video. There's no strategic thinking there. They're not about to say, well, we can't win this. We'll just give up. It's not about strategy for them. It's about ideology. It's about religion. So they're not going to give up. So this thing is going to take a while. And that leaves us with the only question here. Now that we know that Hamas is finished, it's collapsed, and we know the Israelis only need time to get the job done, will the United States interfere? Because right now the U.S. is going into an election year. And that election year is going to put a lot of pressure on the Biden administration to get this war done, which is going to give Hamas a rope, a chance. The only thing that can save Hamas right now is if the United States leans on Israel to stop the war without finishing Hamas because of their demand for quiet in the Middle East in order to get through the elections in the United States, which goes against the direct interests of the United States in the region long term. But that's a story for a whole different video. We'll see. We'll find out. I hope this doesn't happen. I hope they let the Israelis finish the job against Hamas. Let me know in the comments what you think. We'd love to hear your opinion. If you haven't yet, join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Thomas Report. This video is not fully monetized. As you know, we'd love to have your support. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.